In this video, I'm going to teach you the advanced skills that you need to go from being an Azure user to an admin. And you're going to be able to start applying these in the real world right now. Your cloud networks are like your neighborhoods. And as your skills advance, it's like a village growing into a massive city. And all cities have a downtown. That's where the offices and utilities and services and all the shopping is. And that downtown is conveniently surrounded by all of the neighborhoods. So everyone can use the services when they need them and then chill at home when they want to. And of course, it's all connected together by roads with their traffic lights and road signs. And in Azure, your city is a hub and spoke network topology. The hub is the core of your network where all those shared services are like your firewall, VPNs, domain controllers, and file servers, providing connectivity and security for your neighborhoods. And those are the spoke VNets. Each spoke can be a different department or application or environment in your cloud. The spokes get peered together with the hub and usually are isolated from all the other spokes. And that's for more security and simplified management. Now, nobody ever built a city without a plan. And you need a plan to build your hub and spoke, as well as what services you want to host in your hub, how many spokes you're going to need, what their address spaces will be, and how you're going to secure all of that traffic between them. And most importantly of all, you need a plan to grow over time which means you should be working with all of those teams who are going to live in those spokes so you can build the best city in the cloud. Search at the top here for a virtual network and click create. Now what makes a VNet a hub or a spoke are the services you build in them and how you peer them together. So give your new hub a name and then pick your region and click next. Now every city needs services for the citizens to rely on. And here is where you build out your city's security services. Network encryption is a pretty new feature and that creates a DTLS tunnel between the VMs. It even works across peers and most platform services and load balancers. However, it doesn't work with DNS private resolver, which I'll be covering more in the experts video coming up next. It also requires your VMs to all support accelerated networking which is limited to these SKUs. And if one of the VMs in the communication don't support this feature, the traffic will not be encrypted. Fire and health services are up next, and that's with Azure Bastion and the Azure Firewall. Both are gonna require a public IP address, and then you should select the tier of firewall you wanna use. And sometimes you need a little bit of extra help to protect people from weapons of mass destruction, or to keep people safe at the ball game or a concert. And in Azure, that's DDoS protection. And there's actually two different kinds of DDoS solutions. The first protects Azure itself from massive global attacks. It's a service that's always on and it's managed by Microsoft, so you don't need to do anything. This checkbox here, that's for the other DDoS. This is an optional feature protecting your individual VNets from internet-based attacks. And this can be helpful if you have internet-facing applications that you need to protect. And one protection plan can guard up to 100 public IPs. So read up on this feature, including all the cost, and decide if you need this in your hub or your spokes. On the next screen, we have a number of subnets already created for us because we included Bastion and the firewall. And those need special dedicated subnets. Now my hub is also going to need one for my domain controller, so I'll just rename that one and I'll create another one for my file servers. Once you've added all yours, click next and here you want to add your tag so you can keep track of everything and then create. Now the downtown's almost finished, but let's take a second and think about your neighborhoods, those spoke networks. That's where your apps are going to live. And generally each workload should be in its own subnet so that you can properly secure it. Now building a spoke is basically the same thing as a hub. You give it a name, pick the same region for now. The spoke won't need any of these security services because they're already in the hub. And as for the addresses, they're all gonna need to be unique. Connecting spokes to the hub requires none of these addresses overlap. Otherwise, how would you know when you wanna send traffic to 10.1, which 10.1 network is that? 
Now, how you lay out your subnets here is gonna depend a little bit on your apps. For something like Azure Virtual Desktop, you could put each pool in its own subnet or do a pool for pooled and a separate pool for personal. But for something like SAP or another multi-tiered app, you may want three like a web or a mid DB setup. I'll leave all that up to you. Click next, add your tags, and repeat for all of the other spokes you need. Now, no one city has everything for everyone. You might work in another city or want to see a ball game in another city. Connecting your cloud back to your on-prem offices or to other clouds is what we call hybrid connectivity. Now, I put out several polls every week on my channel, and it looks like over 70% of you have trouble with this and routing. So let's dig into these features next. Go to your hub and then look at your subnets. We're gonna add a new one, and this is a special subnet. So click this drop down at the top, and you wanna select the virtual network gateway. Then click add at the bottom. Now to make a new VPN connection, we're gonna need three different resources, a VNet gateway, a local gateway, and a connection. Start by building your VNet gateway in the same resource group as we did the hub, and we'll be creating a site-to-site -site VPN. Then you need to pick your SKU and generation. And there's a lot to think about here, so I suggest you read the doc first, and that's linked in the video description. And then you can pick the right one for your city. After that, you wanna select your hub network and then scroll down. Create a new public IP for your gateway, and I do suggest that it's zone redundant for better high availability. Now, speaking of high availability, we're not actually gonna use the active-active mode today. We'll save that for the expert video. And configuring BGP actually depends on your on-prem side and does it support BGP. After you made that selection, go ahead and create. And let's move on to the local network gateway. This is where you tell Azure what the on-prem public IP is, as well as what the local address ranges are that you want the cloud to be able to talk to. Now, one tip that I'll give you here is that these entries need to match exactly for what you have in your on-prem VPN, or you're gonna get random weird issues and connection drops. And when you're done with that, create, and after they're both finished building, go into one of them, and on the left, go to the connection. Let's add a new one of those, select your connection type as site to site, give it a name, and use the same region as before, and then you select your two gateways from the dropdowns, and as for the rest of these settings, that really all depends on your on-prem appliance that you're connecting to. So check out your documentation there and then click finish. Now that your downtown is open for business, people are gonna need roads to get there from their neighborhoods and they need to know which roads to take to get to your hub. So open your hub network and then go to peerings. Add a new one, give it a name, and then you wanna select your first spoke network and scroll down. These checkboxes tell Azure how the traffic should flow between them, and I'll pick the first two so the traffic is bi-directional, and these next two are for the gateway. Now, since we have a gateway resource in the hub, I'm gonna choose the second option here, and then scroll down, give that side a name, and then I also want bi-directional communication here, and then at the bottom, I'll pick this checkbox. Click Add to complete the connection and just repeat the peering steps for all those other spokes to turn your isolated neighborhoods into a sprawling city. And now we really just have one problem left. If you don't advertise your downtown's grand opening, nobody's gonna come. And if we don't have routing set up properly for your spokes, they won't know how to send traffic to the hub. But besides that, do we need anything else? Well, yes we do. We need DNS. And we talked a lot about that in our last video. You might have some kind of on-prem DNS server or Azure private DNS zones or even DNS resolver. And you know that Azure does use its own DNS by default. So if you want something else, you need to tell it or your people won't be able to find your stuff. So go to your hub and to your spokes to the DNS servers, change it to a custom IP, and then put in the IP address for your DNS endpoints. Now that'll fix resolving your IP addresses into names, but GPS can't help you if you can't route to your destination. Now every device in your subnets will inherit a route table. You can actually see it by going to your VM's network card and then scrolling to the bottom and clicking this link for effective routes. 
And this is how the route table would look for a brand new virtual network that's standalone and not connected to anything. There's really only two allowed routes. The VNet can talk to itself and you can talk to the internet, at least until Microsoft removes internet access. Now this is what the route table would look like after peering. We've got routes connecting the spokes into the hub and also we've got a route for our new gateway to get back to on-prem. But what if you wanna go from spoke one over to spoke two? Now routing in Azure is actually non-transitive. So this is not gonna work, at least not without some help. Search at the top for a route table. Let's create a new one, pick the same region and give it a name. And as for the propagate gateway routes, well, that's gonna advertise your on-prem routes directly into your subnet, which I generally don't suggest. I like that stuff to stay in the hub. But if you have a whole lot of routing changes all the time, it could be beneficial. So I'm gonna leave it off for now. Just add my tags and create. Next, of course, we need some routes. And you might be thinking, well, this looks pretty easy, but hold on there a second, Sparky, because there's actually a lot to think about. Now let's talk about this IP route first. Just add the address range for the spoke that you wanna to get to. And now let's have a pop quiz. We've got this next hop type. So which one is the right one to get the data over from spoke one to spoke two? Now I want you to look up all of these things yourself and try to figure it out because it's really empowering. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you a few seconds. I'll just wait. All right, and the correct answer is D, virtual appliance. This is because routing is non-transitive. So you're gonna need some kind of appliance like a firewall to receive that traffic and then forward it on to the next hop. So that means we need to jump over to our firewall, grab the private IP address, and then paste it here in our rule. And of course, you can do that for all of your other spoke routes. Now, this service tag, this one's a little bit different. Service tags represent cloud services like Azure Storage. And you've got the option here to select storage, which would be all Azure Storage in every region, but that's really a lot more access than people need. So why not limit it to storage in the region that you want? And now that you have your destination set, you need your next hop type. And this one isn't straightforward because the answer is different depending on how you have your storage configured. So over here in the storage account, go to networking, and this is the storage accounts access control list. By default, any VNet or from the internet can send traffic to your storage account. Now, don't worry because they still need to authenticate to access anything, but that's one option. A more secure option is to allow only specific subnets. But even with that setting, traffic is still gonna go to the internet facing endpoint of your storage account. So the most secure way is actually to disable everything. Well, now if you do that, of course, how are you gonna talk to it? Well, that's where private endpoint connections come in. When you add a private endpoint, this creates a network card on the subnet that you're using, and that represents your storage account. And that keeps routing local on your subnet. So. Pop quiz, which one of these next hop types work for each of these scenarios? The none option will black hole your traffic, so that's not gonna work. But you actually could use it if you wanted to block certain services or even block services from a region. Now the gateway option works if you wanna send that traffic from your spoke back through the hub down to on-prem and then go out to the internet and come back in. And it's sort of similar for the virtual appliance because you send the traffic from the spoke to the hub to the firewall and then over to storage, which is definitely better than the gateway option. But that internet traffic would still leave out the subnet SNAT and then come back into Azure's public endpoint. And all three of those cases are gonna need the storage account set up for internet access. The VNet route option works if you lock down the storage account to a specific subnet, but what about that private endpoint? Well, in that case, you don't need a route at all. Take a look at the route table. And this one right over here, this slash 32, that's a single IP address of your private endpoint. No extra routing rules required because it's right in your subnet. Now this would again be completely different if you had multiple spokes that needed to access this storage. 
In that case, generally I would suggest putting the storage in the hub and then you would just be able to use the VNet route or even the virtual appliance to get to the private endpoint that way. Now with your rules all done, we need to associate the route table to your spoke subnets. Just select your VNet up here and then select the particular subnet and click OK. Now your hub and spoke may be all connected, but if you want to learn how to go from being an admin to an architect, you're going to need to watch this video next. And happy learning.